in this video, I will show you 10 things that help me start automating my whole farm. Number one tip, number one is using Home Assistant. It is the easiest way to get started with uh, sort of a central hub. So think of Home Assistant as the home brain or home computer. This is where everything goes through. So it's open source, it's free. Uh, I have it running on an, a Raspberry Pi. So inside my server cabinet here, I have it running on this Raspberry Pi, which is connected to all of my Ubiquiti stuff. Um, and that's all it runs. This is all Home Assistant right here. And I, you know, on the website, the Home Assistant website, there's a very easy tutorial to install on Raspberry Pi. But Home Assistant lets you uh, integrate all sorts of things. So if you have Philips Hue stuff, that works with Home Assistant. If you have Trio Lights, that works with Home Assistant. If you have irrigation systems, if you have garage openers, window sensors, uh, I mean door sensors, everything works with Home Assistant. Um, there are a few things that don't. A lot of the Apple stuff, for some reason, uh, the home kit things don't tend to work, I found. Um, I don't know if that's Apple or something else that there, but in general, all of the different tools and everything work with Home Assistant. Now, a lot of the sort of um, high-end or popular, let's say popular home assistant or home automation, rather, um, devices and stuff, are, are, there's an integration. Someone has written the piece, the piece of software that makes them work with Home Assistant. And then what happens is you get all this data into Home Assistant and you can start um, having, you know, one brand of temperature sensor make, you know, raise an event that another brand of light will, you know, flash on. Like it just brings everything together. So Home Assistant is my number one tip and that's where you should start if you've never done home automation before. There are other brands and things available that will do the same thing, but in my experience, that is the best way to get started. All right, on to number two. Right, tip number two, find a useful project that is small enough in size so you can tackle it to start with. Um, so one of the very early projects I had is that I installed a door sensor here, and that is just an Akara door sensor. And so there's another one on this side here. So when that's just a magnet, when that's closed, the sensor message uh, or signal saying the door's closed. Very simple item. Uh, the issue I had was that Sometimes my heater, which is in here as well, I'll turn it on, but the door would be open. And uh, these houses in Australia are made of chicken wire and cardboard. So if the door's open and the heater's on, it doesn't help. Like it just, it just goes out. So the door had to be closed for me to turn my heater on. So now if I turn my heater on and the door's open, it turns the heater off again. And I know, oh crap, yeah, the door's open. So I need to have my door closed. Very small project, very manageable, but very useful for me because it will make sure that my office was warm and I wouldn't waste energy. So find a manageable project and start with that. Very small, very simple, go. Tip number three is finding a project that saves you time or money or both. Now, as an example, I have a bore tank here and I was forever wandering up and trying to you know, look into it, see how much water was in it, turning on the pump to fill it up and turn it off and etc. I spent hours walking up here and back, back and forwards, back and forwards. So with home automation, I put a sensor on the tank and a switch, Wi-Fi switch on the, uh, on the pump switch. And, and that made sure that I could turn it off and on remotely. I could monitor how much water was in it. I could even automate it. So when I turn it on, it gets to a certain level, even turns on on its own. So that's my tip number three, is to find a project that saves you time and money or both. Tip number four, research. Research, research, research. If you are thinking of some sort of automation that you want to do, research the crap out of it. Um, I did that with this particular sensor that's on this house tank here. Uh, so much so, in fact, I made a whole video on it. I'll link that up there or there or wherever it goes. Because when you research things, you get an idea of what the different components can do. So for this example here, this tank is in ground. I needed to measure the water pressure at the bottom of the tank it's in the ground, there's water. So I came up with this contraption with a friend of mine to uh, basically enclose this pressure sensor and lower it into the tank, so it's inside the tank. But the research that we did beforehand saved so many hours. We only had one failed go at this uh, because water got into the, the enclosure that we made. But other than that, 
the solution actually worked and still works beautifully. So research is my tip number four. Four. Yeah, lots of it. Yeah, sorry about the darkness, but uh, tip number five is don't get logged in to a single ecosystem. So I mean by ecosystem is like don't all just, you know, don't just get just a car or don't get only IKEA stuff. Um, because if you do that, you sort of lock yourself in to only using a particular, um, well, brand and you get very limited on what that brand offers. As an example, I'm here with my Philips Hue Spotlight. That's why it's out in the dark so you can see the spotlight. Um, which I use all over my garden for lighting trees and paths and whatever. I use the Philips because they are by far the best product for outside, but I connect them to the Combi, uh, which you'll see in just a minute what that is. But I use the, the Philips light with Tuya lights, with uh, Acara uh, sensors, with temperature sensors for other brands. So it all meshes together. I don't lock myself into a single ecosystem and that, that's just that's important don't do it because you limit yourself in what you can do with your home automation even though it might make it easy up front i still wouldn't do it so uh all right let's go back to uh daylight again ready all right number six that is using the combi 2 uh, hub for your zigbee network so if you are not familiar with zigbee that is a wireless standard that lets you connect all sorts of sensors on a not Wi-Fi network. So it is a mesh network, but lets you connect, um, you know, temperature sensors and door sensors and garage openers and all sorts of sensors that needs to have that are relatively short range uh, in in um, in signal. But all of them needs to connect to a hub. Now, if you buy Philips, they want to buy you, want you to buy the Philips Bridge, the Philips Hub. If you buy the Acara sensors, they want you to buy the Acara hub, etc., etc. They all want the, all want you to buy only theirs, so that only their product connects to them, and it's a real pain. Instead, the Combi 2 uh, from Decons in in Germany, and it's up here. That's why I'm up here on the ladder. Where we go? There it is. And it looks like this. Now I just have it lying up here, so it's it's just that bit there, that USB thing. That's all that is. Now this. Cable here is a USB cable that runs into my Raspberry Pi, which the server cam that you saw earlier is just over there. And this is where everything connects to that is Zigbee, but it also connects to, well, it connects to everything. So it connects to Philips stuff, to Ikea stuff, to uh, Acara stuff, to um, what else we got? Um, Sonoff things, anything that Zigbee pretty much can connect to that. Not exactly everything, but it's pretty close. So that is my tip number six. Use the Decons, uh, the Combi 2 from uh, Decons or from, what's it called again? Dresden Elektronik, which is a German company. It's a fantastic product. Get it on Amazon or something. I think that's what I did. So tip number six. Mm. Okay, tip number seven is to take backups. Now I use Home Assistant, so I mean backups of Home Assistant or whatever system you use, take backups. I had one system crash on me and I only had a backup from four months ago and I had to recreate everything. So take backup. Now let me show you here in Home Assistant how you do that really easily. Go into Supervisor, which is there. Go to Snapshots and create a snapshot. And go full snapshot, create that, and that's it. Now in this case, mine are about half a gig, the snapshots, but storage is cheap. Just keep them, keep at least three or four. And then when uh, something does happen, because it probably will, then you're good to go. So there you go. Creating a snapshot or backup. Do it weekly, monthly, but just do it regularly. So tip number eight is to buy one thing. And what I mean by that is whenever you buy a new device um, for your home automation, just buy one of them. As an example, I uh, wanted to extend my Zigbee network um, and IKEA has these repeaters, see? Beautifully mounted here. Um, I'm now in my office. I needed the Zigbee signal up here, but it's down in the house, so I needed to you know, extend, it, you know, it, you know, extend it up to here. And I use these IKEA Zigbee repeaters. Um, in fact, I bought a whole bunch of them and uh, as it turns out, they're not very good. They're probably good when you have all IKEA stuff, 
but this is the only one that's still working, the one in the office. These just stop working. Um, some of them I can sometimes get back on the network by resetting them and re-adopting them and all that, but it's a pain. So I should have bought one of them, tested it, and then figured out if it was the right thing. So don't buy a whole bunch of an item or a device that you think you might need, just buy one, test it out, and then figure out if it is right before you invest in a whole bunch of them, because these are just all junk, really. All right, tip number nine, and it's coming to you from here in my newly renovated part of the house. Ooh, that was paint. I think we just painted this bit. Shouldn't touch that. Oh well, um, have patience. That's my ninth tip, just have patience because this home automation stuff is still very new and it's an absolute rabbit hole. Um, there will be so many times where you go, but it just worked. I just did this and now, and now it doesn't. And it happens all the time. And if you don't have any patience with that, it just, it becomes impossible. A good example is I have these Akara temperature sensors. And I have quite a few of those, about 10 of them all over the house. Um, and they're just a little thing. They're very nifty. You can put them on the wall or you can put them here, whatever. And I use those um, with the combi that you saw before. They're Zigbee, right? Now, when these connect, this took me a while to figure out. I thought they stopped working at times, but what happens is that when these connect, they connect to a node on the Zigbee network, so that's like a light or something, and then they will always, forever, try to connect to that same node. So I had uh, one of these temperature sensors that I uh, happened, happened to connect to one particular node. I then moved this about, well, way too far away from the node, and it would never, ever connect. I'm like, what the hell? What's happening? And that's simply because that's a quirk of these ones. These are car runs, so you want to make sure that you connect them roughly in the position where they're going, otherwise you will have a lot of trouble with them. Um, that's, that's tip number nine, patience. You absolutely have patience because it's frustrating at times, uh, it's infuriating, it's puzzling, it's head scratching, it's all of those things, and then suddenly you go, ah, I get it now, right? And that's why I do these videos as well because I want to make sure people don't have to go through those same things if I can avoid it. So anyway, on to the next and last tip. Okay, and finally tip number 10. That is just have fun with it. Be creative. Home automation is still very new. As you probably figured out by now, there's a lot of caveats and rabbit holes and things that just will go wrong. Uh, but that's part of the fun. You know, gotta embrace it. So be creative. Try and match things like weirdly. So have a, a temperature sensor that triggers a light when it's too too dark, uh, too warm or something like that. You know, whatever it might be that you want to you want to do get from it. Um, make sure though that it is something that will save you time or energy or money. I think that's important because that kind of makes it worthwhile. But be creative. Have fun with it. Um, that's my tip number ten. So if you enjoyed this video, please uh, subscribe to the channel and give it a like. Hey, and uh, give me a comment. Like, what are your top tips on getting started with home automation? Because these were just my 10, but you might have some that are much better. I don't know. But until next time, um, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the 10 tips and see you then. Bye.